I wanted to bring this up because I do believe that the United States government, and maybe this is just me being too much of a bleeding heart liberal, could do more to contribute to helping the Ukrainian government keep afloat its educational institutions. I want to talk about how we we talk about when it comes to reference to the war in Ukraine, constantly the military side of the war uh, and those who like directly die from combat as as casualties of the war. Uh, we talk about, you know, the, the moving of the front line, what type of military equipment has been sent, what uh, battles are upcoming, possible plans the Russians have, possible plans the Ukrainians have. And if we get to the humanitarian side of it, we're usually so busy dealing with the with the mass graves that are being uncovered across the country or dealing with the the war crimes that are being uncovered that we don't get to talk about some of the finer details of how uh ukrainian uh the ukrainian economy is affected i actually was thinking about doing a very boring video where i just sit down kind of immoral, immoral morally corrupt, corrupt bankrupt man. man thank you old brick house for giving me a tier one sub being subbed for 10 months in gutter chat i really appreciate it uh you got that uh you got that gutter chat spunk you're pulling yourself up by your bootstraps i really appreciate it hey did you already talk about the dalai lama i did i did i gave as much nuance as i can to my to my take about how creepy he was um if you want to I'll, I'll i'll release a video on it as well eventually but after today's vod you can you can go check it out like afterwards i'll, I'll publish the vod you can check it. it was the first segment of today but we don't get a lot of time just talk about the finer details of how Ukrainian society is affected. Like I was thinking about sitting down and going through different like basic food items that Ukrainians uh, have to purchase and basic items that they have to, you know, get through their daily life, you know, like toilet paper and like turnips, stuff like that. And seeing how the prices have changed since the war has started, because since I've come in, in come into the country as a foreigner, all the prices are low to me no matter what, right? I bought a I bought a new camera today. That was expensive because it was electronics. But when we're talking about like food items or like if I go to a, like a restaurant or like a local uh, hostel and like have them like cook me breakfast or something, the prices are going to be unbelievably low compared to what I'm used to in the United States. And so for me, the situation's fine. Because I'm 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 being paid, uh, quote unquote, Western salaries in a country where the prices are very very low and the cost of living is pretty low relative to where I grew up and and the type of money uh, that I that I make back in the states, right? But uh, that doesn't mean that this uh, economic upheaval hasn't have had a legitimate negative economic effect on the daily living of ukrainians which i know we all kind of assume but i want to talk about that a little bit and i want to talk about one specific aspect of it and that is how the russian military is currently robbing a generation of ukrainians of a good education and robbing a generation of teachers out of a good living wage now this is a very long article that you can go check it out on yourself it's on the open democracy uh news site it's uh, uh, titled, The Cost of War Leaves Ukraine Struggling to Pay Its Teachers. And what the basic premise of this uh, article is, is that since the start of the war, spending, what has been allocated for, uh, you know, wages for teachers and uh, what, you know, what goes into the bucket of teachers at the end of the day to pay them for the work, what it was allocated for them compared to last year is down 20%. This is because defense spending in Ukraine has ballooned and exploded as the country is desperately trying to stop the, the rapers and the pillagers from capturing more towns, more villages, and more cities. And with and while I obviously understand that, that it's left other uh, vital public services that are necessary to, you know, develop another generation of Ukrainians to be happy, healthy, healthy and well-educated, that has left other services underfunded. And one example of this is teachers, where there are many environments, many locations across Ukraine where teachers make less money every month teaching than cost than the cost of rent in their cities and towns are where they'll be making about 150 dollars a month and the cost of rent in their city and their or their town depending on where they live is 200 dollars a month and a lot of these areas in the countryside due to how the payment structure is lined up uh, are going to be getting even less money on average uh, meaning that there's a disincentive for people to be working, uh, teachers to be working in rural communities where if they leave and there's no teacher, 
there's like nothing for those kids. Not to mention a lot of those parents can't, even if they want to go out of their way to still find a way for those rural children to get an education, it's going to be very difficult for them to transport them into major cities or into other locations uh, to get their children educated. In many instances, they can do that, but some villages are so remote that it, that isn't an option. Or due to the war and, and the checkpoints, the amount of time that it would take them to move from one location to another uh, just makes the whole thing so much of a hassle that it's not worth it. And with the whole war going on, who really cares if Billy is missing out on a, a year or two or three years of education? Well, actually, that's very vital for the development as a productive member of society. It's very vital for them to be competitive in the workforce. It's very vital for them to have a higher standard of living and be able to take advantage of the opportunities presented to them uh, with a 21st century education. So I wanted to bring this up because... I do believe that the United States government, and maybe this is just me being too much of a bleeding heart liberal, could do more to contribute to helping the Ukrainian government keep afloat its educational institutions. I mean, we're talking about uh, a a a a twenty percent decrease in salary cut. If we were to make that up, we'd be talking about probably like two hundred million dollars. And we would be able to solve this issue 200 to 300 million dollars which is a gigantic amount of money for the ukrainian government to come up with but in the grand scheme of american aid to ukraine or western aid to ukraine it's very small and hell it doesn't even need to just be the united states i know the world bank is working on this issue somewhat as well it could be a coalition of countries supporting ukraine it doesn't even have to be countries that are directly tied to supporting ukraine militarily this is something that japan i know they've signed 9.5 billion dollars in aid to ukraine this is something they could contribute without it being lethal aid this is something that south korea can contribute without it being lethal aid this is something that other organizations can contribute with Without it being lethal aid or other uh you know governments could contribute without it being lethal aid very easy to convince people that ukrainian children need this so i wanted to bring this issue up not only because i believe children are being deprived of a good education but these ukrainian teachers are staying back in a war zone even though in almost every single instance if they were to leave the, their position as teachers, definitely in the rural communities, they could get other jobs with better pay. But they're staying in these jobs with, with bad pay because they care so desperately about the children in these communities who would be deprived of a good education. And so I do not want that love of their children, the love of this, this generation of kids that are, that are being risen in just terrible conditions in Ukraine, to undercut their ability to feed themselves, house themselves, close themselves. There is no way for, for the vast majority of teachers in Ukraine to really sustain themselves alone on a teacher salary. And that is a problem. Do you think it's also possible to do a kind of exchange where teachers who are willing to help teach in UA can go to the country and be subsidized by the government? This seems like a stupid question, I know. So uh, it's not a stupid question. Um, I think it's a, it's a good question. I mean, there's a lot of volunteers that have gone to Ukraine and have done good work. And so there's no reason to believe that a, you, a teacher couldn't go to Ukraine and, and continue to do good work. The problem you're going to run into, though, is that the majority of, ch of children in Ukraine do not speak fluent English. And if we were to, for example, send 10,000 American teachers over and, and we covered it or, or some charity did that, do those people speak Ukrainian? No. And so it would probably be easier for us to just, you know, cover the teachers locally than it would be for us to get other teachers and send them in and try to get them to learn Ukrainian so then they could teach the kids. Or try to find enough teachers who know Ukrainian internationally, which is not one of the most well-known languages. It's not Chinese. It's not English. Right. Uh, it's, I'm not saying it's a bad language. It's just not a very well known language. It's not a language that a lot of people sp you know, speak outside of Ukraine out uh, if you're not part of the Ukrainian diaspora. It would be a lot easier to just cover the teacher's expenses, in my opinion, not to mention the fact that this has gotten so bad that the local uh, uh, the, the way like uh, teaching is is distributed when it comes to pay 
structure when it comes to how teachers get pay. A lot of it is due to the budgets of, of local governments. It's not really coming too much from the national governments. So uh, not only is uh, this, uh, this an issue for uh, Ukraine on a national level, but it's also an issue for them on a local level. God, what was the, oh God, I lost my train of thought for a second. I've been doing this a lot on stream recently. I've been losing my train of thought a lot recently, man. You know how like Vosh has that CIA brain gun that gives them migraines? I have a feeling that I've got like an FSB mine agent, uh, like FSB agent, like sitting out in the outskirts of Kiev with a mind ray. Every single time I, I feel like I'm somewhat on a roll, he pulls the trigger to try to like disrupt my brain frequency, try to try to fuck me up. Is it jet lag? It can't be jet lag. I've been in Ukraine for, what, like almost a month now? Or going on a month? Oh, um, oh, here's the thing I wanted to bring up. It has gotten so bad that a lot of these localities, which are trying to manage these budgets, have gone to teachers and they've just straight up said, please take unpaid leave. If you do not take unpaid leave, we will not have enough money to pay you, and we're going to have to do mass layoffs. That's something the Ukrainian government has somewhat avoided. They've they've avoided the mass layoffs by cutting bonuses and cutting in other areas, and and trying to you know ask people to take extra days that uh, without payment. But it's also by asking more and more people to take unpaid leave because a lot of these localities cannot pay for these teachers if they come to work every day that they're supposed to. It's gotten that bad. And if it's gotten that bad, it's undermining the education of the children. And I do think that should be a priority for the coalition supporting Ukraine. I mean, let's think about this. When we talk about the war, it's not just winning the war right now, as in going up to the Russians and pushing them out of the country. It's also making sure that Ukraine afterwards has the, uh, has the you know, economic development, has the education and has the willpower. Uh, we know where they have the willpower, but the education is going to be a big role, uh, be a big factor in this as well. It's going to need all the tools necessary in order to rebuild its society and make Ukraine more prosperous than ever before and making sure that they develop Ukrainian society and deal with issues like corruption to make sure that we avoid situations like this in the future, to make sure that we avoid a lot of the pitfalls that have led to a lot of the educational problems Ukraine already had even before the war, or a lot of the other institutional and societal problems that Ukraine has. So education is going to be a really, really big part of rebuilding Ukraine, and so that's why I think it's a priority for investing in it. It means less money and aid later if we invest in education now so we can help the Ukrainians help themselves.